What is up, YouTube? It's CS back here with another installment, and here are my picks for Strike Force World Heavyweight Grand Prix Barnett versus Haritanov. So, yeah, MMA's version of the Super 6 middleweight bullshit, whatever, is coming back on this card. And, yeah, what can I say? No Overeem, he's gone. We got Daniel Cormier replacing him in that bout versus Antonio Silva. Sergey Haritanov, of course, is taking. Um, on Josh Barnett, that should be pretty entertaining in the main event. Middleweight championship bout between uh, Ronaldo, Jacques Ray Souza, and Luke Rockhold. I'm pretty big on both these guys, um, but I think everyone knows who's going to win that. We got one of my boys, one of my favorite fighters, Hodge Gracie, up against King Mo, Muhammad Lawal. That should be pretty entertaining while it lasts. And we're going to start off this one by talking about the first bout on the main card, and that is between lightweights. Pat Healy and Maximo Blanco. Alrighty, y'all. Pretty interesting bout here between two uh, pretty interesting lightweights. We've got Pat Healy on one side. Offensively, as a grappler, he's pretty talented. Um, flashy subs. Uh, good takedowns. Decent wrestler. To me, that's all he can threaten. Maximo Blanco with his stand-up isn't the greatest. He is aggressive, though. And he might be able to come forward, pressure Blanco, and set up for a takedown. But he's definitely not going to want to strike with Blanco. Blanco has refined his uh, kickboxing skills over the past few fights. And it's definitely um, what he wants to do with this one. He wants to avoid the ground. It all counts with um, Pat Healy. Pat Healy's a better submission grappler. Um, with Blanco's, you know, talented wrestling base, you know, he has competed for Venezuela numerous times, amateur-wise. And uh, he has a great wrestling base. And for the most part, he's used it. Um, it for the most part, he's used it uh, pretty well in his MMA career. Being able to dictate where to dictate the pace of the fight and where it goes, you know, if he usually wants to keep it on the feet and just let his power in his hands do the talking, and um, he's been able to do that. And if he feels like taking you down, he will. But he's, I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen him on his back. So I think it's gonna be highly unlikely for Pat Healy to get the fight where he wants, which is on the ground. I expect this to be stand up, and I think that um, Maximo Blanco is eventually gonna finish Pat Healy. I think. Um, you know, Pat Healy's going to come rushing in for a takedown, I think. Um, I think Blanco shakes it off, um, comes back with a flurry himself, and eventually drops him sometime late in round one, and then finishes him after Pat Healy gets fetal. TKO via punches, so that's my pick. Late round one TKO for Maximo Blanco. Yep. All right, now moving on. My boy, Haja Gracie versus King Mo, Muhammad Lawal in light heavyweight. Pretty fun looking match here. Really don't see how King Mo wins this. You know, how does he decision Hodge Gracie? Does he keep it on the feet and outbox him? I don't think it's likely, although Mo's a good boxer. I think he's going to struggle with that reach. I think Hodge Gracie's improving that jab. I think he's going to keep him at bay with that. And Muhammad Lawal wants to go that route. If, he, if Muhammad Lawal wants to go to the ground with Hodge Gracie, what does he do? You know, stay in his guard? How long is he going to stay there for before he gets submitted? Just saying. You know, he hasn't fought a grappler the caliber of Hodger Gracie. Most people haven't. And I think if you, you know, just do something grappling with lies with that guy, I think you're eventually going to get fucked up by some sort of triangle. You know what I'm saying? And I just don't see Muhammad Lawal, you know, doing that. You know, I think Muhammad Lawal is going to want to take, you know, keep it standing, use his wrestling base to keep it standing, and hopefully outpoint Hodge Gracie, which I think Hodge Gracie will be right there with him doing that. I think eventually um, Hodge Gracie is going to frustrate Muhammad Lawal with that jab, and Muhammad Lawal is going to come in for some sort of um, flurry and uh, throw a one-two, and eventually gets caught up in the clinch with Hodge Gracie. Hodge Gracie has nice trip takedowns, I think. Eventually, that's where he uh, gets to the ground. And is on top of um, King Mo. Um, King Mo on his back. You know, he's a wrestler. A wrestler on their back. Freak out. You know, I think Hodge Gracie is going to throw, um, you know, some ground and pound from there. And eventually, you know, Mo, like I said, wrestler on his back. He ain't going to like it. Is eventually going to roll over. And I think that's where Hodge Gracie gives him the rear naked choke. So that's my pick. Hodge Gracie, round two submission over Muhammad Lawal. I just, I don't know. I think it's a bad stylistic matchup. It's just my opinion. Hodge Gracie, round two, rear naked choke, submission. All right, speak of the devil again with submissions. Ronaldo Jacare Souza versus Luke Rockhold for the middleweight championship of Strike Force. Really big on these guys. Um, two, I'd consider 
some of my favorite middleweights. Um, Jacques Ray, in my opinion, number two in the world. You know, I'm trying to think of guys he loses to in strike in uh, UFC besides Anderson Silva, and I can't. I really think he beats. I think he beats Okami. I think he beats Munoz. I think he beats Sonnen. I think he beats Bisping. Stan. Yeah, I think he beats all those goons. So, what can I say? Jacare is that good of a fighter. You know, if Tim Kennedy gets another crack at him, I think he beats him again. I think Luke Rockhold, he's pretty much better than everything Luke Rockhold's good at. Rockhold's pretty um, well-rounded. Good boxer. You know, for the most part, his wrestling's decent. But it's his... um. You know, brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that's got him his wins. You know, he's a pretty darn good grappler. And for the most part, I think um, Hanalo Jacare Souza, you know, is better grappling-wise everywhere. I think he's a better wrestler. I think he's a better submission grappler in general. I think his Jiu-Jitsu is far more superior. Of course, we know Hanalo Jacare Souza is one of the best grapplers in the world. And one of the best of them in MMA. His MMA grappling is pretty good for the most part. If he doesn't feel like keeping it standing, which he has been for the past couple of bouts, you know, he will um, submit you. Except for that Robbie Waller shit. Of course, you're not going to stand with that dude. But against Tim Kennedy, you know, he kept it standing and was beating him. You know what I'm saying? So his stand-up is not bad. You know, Tim Kennedy's not a bad stand-up fighter, although that's not his forte. You know, for the most part, he got outstruck in that fight. I think um, Jacare will keep this standing um, unless... Rockhold is going to go for a takedown and gets it. I think Jacques Ray is actually going to try to stuff him. You know what I'm saying? I know his chin's been questioned in the past, but it's not like Rockhold. You know, Rockhold has decent power, but I don't think he has the power to knock out Naldo Jacques Ray Souza. I don't think he has Gegard Musasi up power. So I think Jacques Ray is going to keep this on the feet. Batter Luke Rockhold. You know, his uh, boxing is improving along with his wrestling. So I think he'll use both to just keep this on the feet and just outpoint him. And I, but for some reason, I feel like this is going to go to the ground eventually. And I think that's where uh, Luke Rockhold gets out grappled. And um, i got to go with Hernando Jacare Souza here. The, uh, I'm going to say a third round rear naked choke. I think he's winning the fight up until then too. I just think Rockhold gets frustrated, goes for a takedown, and loses. So that's my pick. Hernando Jacare Souza via third round submission rear naked choke. All right, now moving on. For me, the hardest fight on the pick, card to pick. Um, geez. Heavyweight Grand Prix semifinal bout between Antonio Bigfoot Silva and Daniel Cormier. Frick, who do you go with here? Um, Antonio Silva hasn't dealt with a wrestler like Daniel Cormier. And Daniel Cormier has been pretty much, you know, he's been able to take the fight wherever he's wanted. And, you know, his how many ever fights he's had in his MMA career. I know he hasn't faced the greatest competition. But against Jeff Monson. Jeff Monson, good wrestler. You know, he was able to keep it standing and just outstrike him. Um, and I think if he does feel like, you know, testing his boxing skills against Antonio Silva, I don't think that's a good idea. But I think he has the ability to take it down to the ground. Um, which is crazy. And I think it would be an upset pick if I did pick Cormier here. Antonio Silva, for friggin' sakes, is a guy who just totaled Fedor in his last fight. Now, Fedor, you know, he looked like shit. What can I say? But um, I'm going to give some credit to Antonio Silva. I don't think the guy gets enough of it. I think he is one of the best heavyweights in the world. I think he's very skilled. You know, his boxing is definitely improving. Um, his jiu-jitsu is obviously great. I think he has the ability to get to the ground if he wants. Um, can he submit Daniel Cormier if, he gets a, if it somehow winds up, winds up in the ground? Whether he's on top or on the bottom. Yeah, I think he can. You know, but I think Daniel Cormier, you know, it's hard to imagine Daniel Cormier on his back unless he gets dropped. And I just really don't see what Antonio Silva is going to do to stop Daniel Cormier takedowns. I know Cormier is undersized. Bigfoot Silva is a huge dude. But I just, I see him getting taken down. Like, like, I don't know. It's hard to say, you know. Cormier is going to have to get within that reach, you know, to be able to come into striking distance for a takedown. But for some reason, I think he's going to be able to. The guy's an Olympic level wrestler. You know, he's one of the best in MMA for wrestlers. I don't so I don't think Silva's going to submit him. I'm going to say Cormier takes uh, this fight, you know, and I just think he sits in Antonio Silva's guard. Yeah, that is my pick. Daniel Cormier, the uh, boring unanimous decision. Yep. All right, now moving on. Heavyweight Grand Prix semifinal bout between Josh Barnett and Sergey Haritanov. 
Believe it or not, I think this is an easy fight to pick. Uh, Barnett pretty much gets to the ground whenever he wants. Harry Tonov, you know, the guy has uh, decent submissions. But of course, he wants to keep the standing. The guy has knockout power like crazy. Last guy to knock out Alistair Overeem. Last guy to beat him and make competition, I'm pretty sure. That was uh, four years ago. Do I see him having success against Josh Barnett? If it still happens to stay on defeat. You know, Josh Barnett is the better grappler on all counts. And for the most part, that's what I think we're going to see in this match, is grappling. I think Josh Barnett won't have to set up his takedowns that much. Hari Tanov is a very stationary fighter. And in order for him to have success on the feet anyway, he has to plant his feet and drop bombs. And you just have he just has to stand in the pocket. And if you so happen to want to fight like that against Hari Tanov, you're an idiot. And I don't see uh, Barnett doing that. And because of that, even on the feet... You know, if he does stick and move, Barnett, you know, he has okay boxing skills. I think um, that's fine. I, eventually, I think he's going to set up a takedown, I think, which will be relatively easy for him to get. And I think that he got grapples Sergey Haritanov for the majority of the fight and takes a unanimous decision. Who knows? We'll see. Haritanov, does he have a puncher's chance? Yeah. Do I see him doing anything else? Not really. So i got to give it to Josh Barnett. I just think that the majority of his fight will be, you know, submission grappling. I think he's going to threaten. I think Haritano is going to defend. But he's not going to do anything to be, you know, to look offensively capable. And because of that, I see him dropping all three rounds. That's my pick. Josh Barnett be a unanimous decision. All right, y'all. But that about does it for my picks for Strike Force World Heavyweight Grand Prix. Barnett versus Haritano. Now, I should really just call this shit Strike Force Barnett versus Haritano. That title is horrible um pretty sure no one cares about the friggin strike force heavyweight grand prix anymore but whatever you know um i was really looking forward to it but what's this every other card bullshit they should take a note from bellator and just you know try to get this done immediately you know bellator's tournaments over the course of like three months or something those are nice these ones this heavyweight grand prix whatever <laughs> what can i say We'll see. You know, for the most part, I think this card looks um, pretty stacked, main card-wise. Really looking forward to it. You guys should be, too. So definitely check that out on Showtime, you know, September 10th, 2011. Can't wait. Should be fun. So, yeah, I guess I'll hear from you um, soon, hopefully. So tell me your thoughts of the card in the comment section below. And, yeah, my links are in the description as well. So hit me up there. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I guess uh, that about does it. So please and thank you for everything. Thank you for all the support. You guys are awesome, and I guess I'll see you soon. Take care.